Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have six uh, Syrahs in front of me, all from the US of A, uh, two from Washington State, four from California. And uh, I was going to do them in vintage order, uh, but then I worked out that uh, what was going to be the penultimate wine was the, the lowest in alcohol, and it might have been slightly... I don't know, overwhelmed by the wines that came before me. So I'm going to do that first. So they, they range in alcohol from 12.1%, the first one, to 14.6%. Quite a, quite a span. Um, let's just see whether I've got them in the right order. So the first one, the one that uh, says it's 12.1% alcohol, Wind Gap 2008 Syrah from Sonoma Coast. Only 390 cases produced. We are bang in the roan here. There's that smoky, um, uh, almost lactic bacon fat. Um, yeah, rustic but ripe edge here. And um, yeah, it feels like it really does smell like a, it could pass for a northern roan, this. Um, and it feels like it's going to have some freshness. It feels like it's going to have body. Uh, but um, yeah, body and freshness. That's what you want in a wine, isn't it? Well, I'd never in a million years have put that down as California, which... Whether that's a good or a bad thing is entirely up to you. Um, but um, certainly when I think of uh, Californian uh, red wines, I think of things that are quite voluptuous. Here, um, it's, a, it's this upright backbone, the streak of minerality coming through, uh, the acidity keeping it fresh. The fruit is ripe, but it's not overripe. Um, it's delicious, um, and um, I, th I can imagine quite a few people in America uh, won't like it for exactly the same reasons I do like it, uh, for that freshness and bite and acidity, and uh, it's like, it, 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 the fruit is just on that herbal side, so uh, uh, they could probably, if they wanted, have got it up to like 14% alcohol, but they would have made a far worse wine for me in the process. I'd love it. Oh, oh, tasty, tasty. Okay, let's do our two Washington State ones. Um, first one, Boom Boom uh, Syrah, made by Charles Smith Wines, um, and uh, Washington State, does it say whereabouts in Washington State? Columbia Valley. And this is much more what I was expecting. It's not by any means a, a big vulgar wine, but um, there's a bit more richness, roundness, uh, berries, cherries, very ripe, dark berries. Um, and there's a floral note in the background. I don't know whether they've used any Viognier either in here, but um, yeah, there's something just in the background that makes you think um, uh, that there's something else in there. I I'm not sure whether it's Viognier, maybe it's Marsan. There's, there's yeah, this honeysuckle character coming through. It's quite fleshy. There's this licorice character. Um, the, the berries, the berry flavour is there. It's just getting near to that overripeness, but it's not gone into the uh, the jamminess. Uh, maybe I would have liked a little bit uh, more freshness uh, to, to to come in there, but um, it's okay. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's okay. And um, yes, I'm getting I'm getting this like a strong, slightly cooked black currant blueberry. If you imagine putting those two together in the pan, just a bit of sugar, just half a minute or so, and the juice that oozes out, that type of character, plus some of the baked in bits around the edge of your blackberry crumble. One number three, um, still in Washington State, Columbia Valley, uh, but a year older. This is Chateau Saint-Michel, 2009. Uh, it's just, it says Syrah, but I gather that there is a little dollop of Viognier in here. Well, there's a sweet berry earthiness here. Uh, ripe berries, ripe black currants, um, and uh, there's uh, some toasty oak, certainly, uh, but um, not too much of it. And um, I, if the Viognier is adding anything, maybe there is just that little floral edge at the background. I can't say, uh, if, if I, I hadn't known that, that there was a little bit in there, I don't think I would have spotted it. And the vanilla from the oak comes through a bit more strongly when you taste it. Um, and... Um, I think I, I think I think it's going to calm down. I, I, it's, uh, it still feels like quite young wine, um, it, and that nose, that that rich earthy nose, makes me think that there is a better wine to come out in a couple of hours' time. I like it. Um, not I probably like it slightly more than the Charles Smith, but not as much as the Wind Gap. It's okay, um, and um, as it's growing on me, I, I, one of those where. Um, yeah, as that vanilla thing recedes into the background and you're left with this uh, nice fresh fruit. Um, not the most complex of wine, but juicy and um, fresh and tasty. So I think come the end of the evening, I'll probably like it more than I do now. Yeah, that oak is calming down already. Um, wine number four. Um, we are in California now with uh, at the Eberly Winery and this is a Paso Robles Syrah from the Steinbeck Vineyard. 
sweet rounded. It's weird. Uh, what, is it, what vintage is it? Two thousand and nine. Uh, it, it all. It already feels quite mature. There's uh, as if the fruit's already softened as much as it's going to do. Um, and um, uh, and there's this mellow character. Uh, it smells like it's going to be uh, no hard edges there. But I some. I, I wonder whether there's going to be um, uh, as much character as I want. Let's try it. I like it, but not enough. Um, it's. Um, I, I'm left with. Yeah, as I say, the fruit's already maturing, and I'm left with uh, quite firm tannins, um, and this uh, this bit of licorice. It's it's. I think this is the highest alcohol of all the wines here, fourteen point six percent. So um, I, I I and and that impression of that alcohol uh, and that that maturing fruit makes me wonder how much how much life there there is ahead of this wine. I'm I'm very ready to be proved wrong, and I'll keep an eye on this bottle and see what what happens to it with uh, with a few hours open. But at the moment. It looks, um, I, I'd very happily polish off a second glass, a first glass certainly, a second glass probably, but um, not my favourite so far. Number five is uh, Napa Valley, uh, Waterston nine, uh, 2006 Syrah. And there's a strong peppery character that comes out here, slightly soapy. Um, one, one thing that concerns me about the peppery edge um, is, uh, well, the, the fruits, the fruit's quite nice and mature, uh, but that peppery edge is verging, it's verging on that slightly bandagey edge that speaks to me of Britannomyces. Um, it's um, interesting to see how it tastes. Uh, a bit of uh, sweet vanilla, um, this, this minty herbal bandagey character. Um, it's, um, uh, it... it I don't know whether whether it would have been better uh, two or three years ago. Uh, the fruit's lost its perkiness, and um, uh, what's left is it's okay, but uh, not jumping up and down about that one. Hmm, not jumping up and down about that one. Uh, final one is, uh, it, uh, no, what is this? This is called Rock or is it called Tor? Uh, Tor, uh, Rock, Syrah, Kenwood, Family Vineyards. Uh, one of those is the wine, I don't know whether Rock is the name of the winery um, and uh, or Tor is the name of the winery. No, it says Kenwood Family Vineyards, uh, but it's Carneros and it's Syrah 2004. Now this smells good, um, and um, fascinating thing is, I was talking about that slightly bandage edge that I was getting on on the previous one. There is a touch of that here, but um, the wine round it is so much more ample. Uh, so there's this juiciness, there's this really ripe plum uh, and slightly stewed plums as well, um, and um, it feels that um, the, there's uh, it's it not going to be one of those that's trying to bash you around the head with alcohol. It doesn't feel 14.2, so not a shy form, uh, but um, it doesn't feel like someone's gone over the top in extraction to try and impress you. Uh, and it may be that it's 2004 and uh, eight years uh, of age, it, uh, with eight years of age, it, it's showing a little bit more of its gentle character. But it's, it smells like it's going to be really quite tasty. And that's terrific. Um, I, what I like about it is, well, um, I, when I first came across, I'm trying to think of the first uh, Californian series, it would be th stuff like Edmund St. John and Sean Thackeray stuff that, that uh, I tasted in the... Uh, uh, early 90s and uh, coupe and stuff like that and what, what they reminded me of was uh, if you take the um, uh, ripeness and richness of Australia and put pit it against the herbiness and uh, minerality uh, if you want to call it that of, of France uh, they seem to combine that and then they, they went a bit funny and they tried to be a bit Australian and then uh, people people lost their way with Syrah and it's gone out of popularity weird thing is that USA should be producing this stuff like this by the gallon load rather than a lot of Me Too Cabernet anyway back to this wine yeah as I say this seems to be as those early ones I tasted uh, combines the best of Australia with the best of um, uh, best of France, so it's got the yeah, it's got the softness and juiciness and uh, and rounded, rich and plushness of Australia with the uh, more cerebral side of France. And um, I, I mean, uh, it could be that it's, it's 2004, and uh, it, it, as a youngster, it was a bit of a bit of an awkward git. But um, uh, today, it's looking absolutely beautiful. Um, Favourites, um, the first and the last out of this uh, this lineup. The ones in between, 
mixed bag. Uh, but um, I wish that we saw more Californian Syrah, and I wish the California, well, or USA Syrah, um, and I wish that the people in the US uh, drank more of it because uh, I'm getting a bit bored with uh, a diet of Me Too Cabernet. So um, this stuff is far better, I think, pound for pound or dollar for dollar than uh, uh, than what you get for your uh, in, in Cabernet. So um, yeah, go out and do it. And uh, everyone else who's watching this, go out and drink some. And I'm going to go back somewhere and drink some now. And I'll be quiet. And I will see you soon.